I've been working as a pro-life activist for the last several years, basically trying to build a culture of life through collaboration with pregnancy centers, political advocacy, and holistic education. It wasn't until I was really um, taking a deep dive into my faith in college that I really started to question about these, these human rights issues. Of course I was pro-life. I was Catholic, I went to Catholic high school, and but I never really did anything about it. And when I could see it as a human rights violation, it's something clicked for me. That's whenever I got more into a consistent life ethic and it really challenged, it really challenged me to, to ask myself, do I actually care about the human person? Do I actually care about the dignity of every single person? Because that's what the Catholic faith teaches, but can I apply that in my daily life? Advocating for life has to begin in your own family. And I saw that firsthand in my own experience. When my mom was pregnant, she sent pictures of herself back home to her family in the Philippines, um, pregnant. And those pregnant pictures that my grandparents received, they mailed them back with X's on her stomach. They wanted her um, to end her pregnancy and that pregnancy would have been me. And finding that out about my grandparents was confusing to me because I never knew that growing up. They loved me. My Lola loved me. And she would always tell me that I was the apple of my mom's eyes. So I think that my Lola, um, she loved me too with a special love because she she knows what would have been gone if my mom had gotten an abortion. and. And she thought that that would be what was best for my mom. And my mom was an immigrant, right? My mom had a tough decision to make. But what did she do? She chose life for me. She, had, she chose life for me and she was not apologetic about it. Even when everyone else wanted her to be apologetic about it, they, they whispered about her. They talked bad about her behind her back. And so for my mom to say yes to this unwanted child by her grandparents, by my father, I was an unwanted child, but she still wanted me. I feel like Our Lady of Guadalupe specifically interceded for my, for my life. And I can see God's hand in all of it. And what once felt like chaos makes perfect sense because God authored my whole life. And he was there in every single difficult moment. And he, and he gives me a special role. He gives me a special vocation and a special um, mission of service to people who are young mothers or perhaps mothers in pregnancy. And while I really am thankful for the great things that I've gotten to do as an activist, as a speaker on the steps of the Capitol, I am thankful also for the time that my, te my sister as a teenager, when she got pregnant, that I could tell her, we can do this. Do you want me to make you an appointment at the pregnancy center? How can I help? You can do this. You're a strong woman. And I tell her all the time what a strong woman she is to be a mother of a beautiful little girl. The feminine genius is the heart of Catholic feminism. I know that God's given me my life for service because he has loved me. And I firmly believe that who I am in every way, as a Filipino, as an American, as a Cajun, as an artist, and as a woman, all of these things help me in my service. In my service, in my mercy, in my gifts to the church and to the world. And I'm gonna do what I can to be a part of your life to walk with you, to suffer with you. That's what it means to be pro-life. It's very important that we as women fully embrace all of these facets of who we are, of parts of our identity, and offer that with a Eucharistic heart like Jesus, a selfless Eucharistic heart to the world and to the church.